So, Mr. Bodili, I'm going to ask you a few questions and you answer. Yeah. So, uh, can you tell us, like, how did you start in the music business? How did you went to the music business in the first place? Uh, yeah, I started out as a record plugger. I was a dancer first and I used to sing myself. But I started plugging records, uh, Beverly's, that's Leslie Come, Joe Green, Coxon, and you know. I brought Joe Gibbs in the business, Joe Gibbs come in afterward and he had another man in Calatoon, we call him Kenlock. He had the Calatoon label. So I used to get your records play on the radio. When they have a new tune, they give it to me. I became a record producer for myself in 1967. I started out around the business as a record. Not a, as a producer, as a man who get the record, play and go to the different sound system dances and all that. I know from the early sound system come right up until now. The longest sound system in Jamaica from those days come right up is Merito. So, um, but uh, you, you used to go to the sound system from the beginning, from the birth of sound system, if I hear you well. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and as I have a new book coming out, it will tell you about you have the whole time sound system come right up to the present day. But this book early is only about nine or ten years, you know, for up information. The information and things that I know for more than one book. Yeah, <laughs> there have to be several books there, you know. When I started out, my first name was Lee, L-E-E, -E, right? And my second tune came out on Calton. The first tune I did was on um, Do It To My Baby with a group named Light and the Groove Boys. I didn't have the money to put it out, so Calton, that came out on Calton later. And Music Field was the second one, came out. And the world. Double IRA, World West Indies Record. That was um, Roger Shirley music video. But two of them do, both of them do on the same session. It was four songs I did on the session. One named, one with Kenneth Rose and one with a guy named Alva Lewis, who turned out to be a great guitarist after all. Alva Lewis is still alive. We call him Reggie. He's done, if you go to Jamaica now, you go to go buy a tough song, you see. He's a very good friend of Mrs. Marley. Yeah. All right. Then I have a singer. One day of keeping a session at Jukri. The keyboard man didn't turn up on Jukri. He said, Money didn't carry himself. And I said, Yes. Kiapo, why didn't tell me? I was calling Glenn Kiapo to me, so he was a big act. Yeah, I said, well, thank you, Mr. Reed. He said, Sham, can go and go upstairs in the studio. And the rest of these two guys, that's the day. That session happened in 68 when we created the reggae. Everybody talking this and that about reggae. Toots saying his ego reggae. Is that right? Toots was in prison when he was doing that. <laughs> To just come back and hear these songs, I don't want to make the crowd know. And do a tune name, Reggae. My brother, do a tune name, it's a Reggae Time. It was put out in 1968 on Island Records. It's in the book to document it. So, two of them just come and write a wagon. The, if it's in the book, you see, the word Reggae coming from Strege. You see a guy named Leandre who used to do the cartoon. In the Daily cleaner in Jamaica. A man asked a woman if she can do the reggae, and she said, Yes, not with a strege. So the word strege was a, like a bad woman, right? So the radio people would play the word strege. So we go to reggae. That is reggae. If you ask to that, probably might know to hear 
I talk about it plenty of time. That was reggae. He's on baby why you hear the organ shuffling it. So the organ shuffling the music is really First of reggae. Yes. And I want to tell you, you see the ska music, I want to change the beat <laughs> to, to, to rock steady and reggae you now. The ska never leave Jamaica music. The ska is the backbone. You always have the piano or the guitar playing. Ska, ska. So, ska is always in Jamaica music. The ska beat come right down, you slow it down, it's still in the music. So if you take Skia out of the music, it's not Jamaican music. You understand? Skia yeah. music, unfortunately, Glenn died last year. Right? And he never looked back as an organist. He started to play for me. Lee Perry joined the bandwagon because Lee Perry couldn't afford the big guys, the Oaks Brown, them and things no more. So they used to call my musician and the wrong call musician. But today, you have Family Man, which is the great, supposed to be the big, greatest reggae bass band in the world. Yeah. Robbie Shakespeare next. Yeah. All those musicians started with me. I put Sly and Robbie together. You know. You understand? Yeah, son? So it the list goes on. I was in England when Chojan was farming and I started farming records too. You understand? So the whole backbone of the thing coming from way back. When farmer then used to pirate people through and through with backbone that you wanna come and stop it. I said no, these guys have to get some money and then used to give me hundred and fifty pounds. To give Bob them. When I go back to Jamaica, I used to just walk on and check to the guys, they used to wait till I come from England. You understand? Till Palmer them start come down and meet the artists them and do business with them. Because old time producer, they used to just release the tune in England. Not too great, probably Cox used to have people release tune for him, like Miss King. When they get the money, they never give the artists. Right? So when I come to England 68, I change all of that and make every man start getting his job and make musician names start coming on the record. Actually, I called this gentleman to come up here. He was interviewing me this morning and he gave me a story that all of us regular lovers should know. The man that builds through the one rhythm and make it and make that song, he's still alive and he's blind now. He, his name is Sylvian Morris, and he was telling me Morris in Jamaica caught him fine food, and nobody don't recognize him or remember him. He used to make a tune. If you, he's an engineer, and you see him not dancing. It's all oh, Morris. I said, well, I don't feel this, you know, make the bass up, man, play this hour. I said, Morris, you go tell them, then we understand you want. They come over and you see him start dancing. So people like that, people like we should have get up on the music don't have any pension. But we should have tried to do something and remember those guys and try and do something. You you can tell them about Morris. If <laughs> you ask him to come, you're going to see tell them how to speak French. So what do you want to hear? Silver Morris was, is definitely one of the earliest engineers. There has been a guy from Australia called Graham Gould. He was the first one to came to Jamaica to teach some of the Jamaican technicians who learned and studied electronics like radio repairing and things about recording. And Silver Morris is one of the main important people in that time. He started at Whirl, went for a few months to uh, Duke Reed, and then he went to Coxon and stayed there. <coughs> it's not quite sure, like eight, nine or ten years, he, he don't remember by himself. The, t the things that he did in the studio, they created the sound of Studio One. He used certain micro microphones. For instance, the, the, the famous story is the bass sound of Studio One is created by him by putting the microphone on the back of the amplifier, of, of, of the speaker box, not on front, at, at the back. By accident he found that the sound is smarter, softer on, on the back 
of the box. Yeah, probably also the man who started uh, cutting dub plates, soft wax in those days, uh, from the era when they only had two tracks. It was a technical situation where they even couldn't do dub because the music was on one track and on the other track was the vocal. But he found a system for himself by recording on two machines, for instance, to do dub versions in a very early stadium. Okay, so no After that, he left Studio One and went to Harry J's studio, which was built new because Harry J had a lot of money. He sold the intro of his liquidator tune to the staple singers. And so he got a lot of money to, to build a state-of-the-art studio. And there he stayed for more than 12 years, 15 years. It's not quite sure. Excuse me, I don't quote you. What is a Bob Marley album then? The first set that included Nazi Dread that break Bob Marley make everybody know. Mm -hmm. The engineer was Sylvan Morris at, at RJ Sudan. So you see how good this guy is. The first four he, he dead, he is still alive, so it's so okay. good. It's also the right? song that he has enregistered and the most of the first albums of Bob Marley, compris yes. Nati Dread. The first four so, albums on Island Records. Yes, the four first albums of Island Records, it was always. Catch a Fire, uh, Burning, Nati Dread, and yes. which is the other one, I don't know. <laughs> Burning was the first one, with the cigarette lighter. Yeah. Catch a Fire is the first one. Yes, Catch, catch a Fire. fire. Then come burning, then come the out. one that break, really break Bob Marley into the scene is the Nazi Dread. Uh, see. So David Rodrigan started to bring David, them early? David yeah, right. Rodrigan in the record, a uh, radio business long time. He's one of the man that breaks you back through your one. You understand? What should one used to do is make over our tunes and get it released in England. So it, all tune in Jamaica make should the one make it over and it release up here either Blue Cat with Lee Cocktail or um, Miss King that is before Trojan so all the whip Miss Pachinger did that with the Ethiopians him just do it up here when he was on tour with one grey and just release it as the soul brother so when they hear Miss Pachinger won them things say the cartoon is the original. Yeah. Um it was the one that did it show me that break Chris Blackwell in the big time with the um keep on running man. Yeah. With Spencer Tracy group. Keep on running. Yeah. That's Jacket run to write that song. That start to get Island record in the mix. Because Chris Blackwell, he would tell you this himself, he used to go from house to house and sell records. He and Jack Edwards in the early 60s when he was Jack Edwards up here. Both of them? Yes. 